Well, here we go with lesson 35. This is our second out of three lessons on section 4.5 where we're graphing rational functions. Now we're adding one more step here uh, that we didn't do in lesson in the previous lesson, on lesson 34 there. Does and, and we're going to ask this question, does f of x cross the horizontal asymptote? Not the biggest deal in the world, but it would be nice to know if the function crosses the horizontal asymptote. So that'll be the extra question that we're asking. We're still answering the same questions as before. Uh, horizontal asymptote, vertical asymptote, x-intercept, y-intercept, and then we're sketching it. We're adding e there. Does f of x cross the horizontal asymptote? Well, here's our first function. f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 2x minus 4 all over x squared plus x minus 12. Uh, let's find the horizontal asymptote. Then we'll factor top and bottom. Then we'll find the vertical asymptotes. So we have x squared on top and x squared on bottom. So we go to the tiebreaker for the horizontal asymptote. It's 2 over 1. And so our horizontal asymptote will be the line y equal 2. Let's go ahead and factor the top and the bottom. I've got 2x minus 4, x plus 1. You could have factored the 2 out of that and had 2 times x minus 2, but I left it 2x minus 4. On the bottom, we've got x minus 3, x plus 4. So our vertical asymptotes are x equals 3 and x equals negative 4. X-intercepts. Are there any values of x that would make the numerator 0? And it turns out there's a couple of them. If you let x be negative 1, we'll have a 0 in the numerator. If you let x be 2, we'll have a 0 in the numerator. So those are x-intercepts. Again, x-intercepts. When do you cross the x-axis? It's when y is 0. It's when the numerator is 0 y-intercepts got to be the easiest point to find. You go to the original function, you put 0 in for x, and you end up with negative 4 over negative 12, which reduces down to 1 3rd. So our y-intercept will be at 0, 1 3rd. There can only be 1 if there is 1. Now for the new thing, does the function cross the horizontal asymptote? And to do this, we're going to set the original function, before we factored it, equal to y equal 2. I want to know, is there a value of x that returns a 2. Set the function equal to the horizontal asymptote. So I set the function equal to 2. I multiply both sides by the denominator. I distribute the 2. And look, you get 2x squared on both sides. You will always cancel out the lead terms. Then we're left with negative 2x minus 4 equals 2x minus 24. Negative 4x equals negative 20. x equals 5. The answer is yes, it does. There is a value of x that returns the horizontal asymptote. It's the point 5 comma 2. Not the biggest deal in the world, but it's a point. It's kind of nice to know. The only time we ask this question is if the horizontal asymptote is not zero. If the horizontal asymptote is zero, then we answer this question when we determine the x-intercepts. When the y, when the horizontal asymptote is something other than zero, we have to find this out. Well, we don't have to, but it's really nice to. Hey, that's another point. Let's get graphing. All right, so the horizontal asymptote goes in there, going from right to left at y equal 2. I've got two vertical asymptotes going up and down, x equals negative 4 and x equals 3. I plot my two x-intercepts, negative 1, 0, and 2, 0. I plot my y-intercept at 0, 1 third. Just kind of guess where 1 third's at. And then I, I graph my horizontal asymptote intersection at 4, 2. Remember, the horizontal asymptote is not sacred around the y-axis. It's sacred at the extremes. As we come in from the left, we got to be hugging the horizontal asymptote. As we exit to the right, we have to be hugging the horizontal asymptote. Now let's look at region 1. There's three regions, by the way. Region 1, left of x equals negative 4. Are we coming in above, going up, or are we coming in below, going down? Think about that for a second. So why did we come in above, going up? two things. We know we're not going to cross the horizontal asymptote. We found the only place we're going to do that. And we know we're not going to cross the x-axis. We found the only two places that's going to happen. We had to come in above going up as we approach that vertical asymptote. Had we come in below the horizontal going and we would have had to go down, we would have had to cross the x-axis. And there are no x-axis crossings. And if you're not sure, plug in negative 6 into the function. See what you get. All right, let's move on to the middle region. I think that one's pretty obvious because we've got three points we've got to go through there and we're not crossing the horizontal asymptote. So think about that for a second. Middle region. Well, we're not crossing the horizontal asymptote. We've got three points to go through and I don't know exactly what it looks like. It's got to go through those three points. It's probably still on its way up when it passes that y-intercept. Who knows? We'd have to use calculus to find the turning point there. and I don't want to do that. 
All right, let's look at the third region there to the right of x equals 3. What do you think is happening? We can't cross the x-axis. There are no x-axis crossings. We have to cross that point, and as we exit the page, we have to be hugging the horizontal asymptote. Think about it. Well, we had to come from the top going down. We had to cross over, and then we'll spend the rest of our life going back up. There's a turning point there somewhere beyond that intersection point where we, we're, we're declining, and then we start to go back up again. But this is good enough. That's good enough. It's going to hug that for a while. That's it. And students say, how'd you know that? I said, give me another option that fits all this data. You know where you're crossing the x-axis. You know where you're not crossing the x-axis. You know where you're crossing the horizontal asymptote. You know where you're not crossing the horizontal asymptote. It's got to make sense. And this makes sense. Moving on. All right, we got a negative x squared minus x plus 6 over x squared plus 3x minus 4. Let's get that horizontal asymptote out of the way first. Looks like we have a tie, so we go to the tiebreaker. So our horizontal asymptote is y equal negative 1. Therefore, we will be doing uh, part E down there. Again, we will not do part E if the horizontal asymptote is the x-axis, because we will have answered that question in part C. Let's move on. So I factor the top and I factor the bottom, and nothing cancels out. So I'm going to stare at the bottom there, and I've got x equals x plus 4 and x minus 1. So my vertical asymptotes will be x equals negative 4 and x equals positive 1. Let's move on to the x-intercept and the y-intercepts. X-intercept. We want to know, are there any values of x that make the fraction 0? And the only way for that to happen is for the numerator to be 0. And sure enough, there is. If you let x be negative 3 or you let x be 2, we get zeros in the numerator, and that's where you cross the x-axis. The y-intercept. The easiest point to find. Put 0 in for x everywhere. You get 6 over negative 4, which reduces down to negative 3 halves. We have a y-intercept below the x-axis at negative 1 and a half. Does the function f of x cross the horizontal asymptote? So I'm going to set the original function equal to negative 1. I want to know, is there a value of x that returns negative 1? Is there an x common negative 1 somewhere? It might, there might not be one, but uh, let's check it out. So we set equal negative 1, we multiply by the denominator, we distribute the negative 1, the lead terms cancel out, the lead terms will always cancel out. Add 3x to both sides, subtract 6 from both sides, and sure enough, x equals negative 1. When x is negative 1, y is negative 1. We cross the horizontal asymptote. Now, when will you not cross the horizontal asymptote? If you do this and you end up with like 8 equals 6 or 10 equals 0, then you say, okay, I'm not going to cross it. But if you get a legitimate value for x, that means the answer is yes. And sure enough, at negative 1, 1, we cross the horizontal asymptote. All right, here we go. How horizontal asymptote is y equal negative 1. That's going from right to left down there. Vertical asymptote is uh, negative 4 and 1. Those are going up and down. I have two x-intercepts, negative 3 and 2, so I dot those in there. I have a y-intercept at negative 1 and a half, so I put that between negative 1 and negative 2. And we cross the horizontal asymptote at negative 1. So negative 1, negative 1 is a crossing. So put all that in. Now we have to sketch it, and it's got to make sense. And as you come in that first region, are you above the horizontal asymptote going up, or are you below it going down? Think about it. We had to be below going down, and the reason for that, had we been above it going up, we would have had to cross the x-axis, and there are no x-axis crossings in the first region. So that's it. That's the only option we have. How about the middle region? That looks interesting. You might plug some points in. I'm not sure if you want to do that or not, but you're welcome to try. And here's another one. There really was only one option. As I entered that middle region, I had to be coming from the top down or from the bottom up, and I had to get to that first x-intercept. So I had to come from the top down. And then what happened was we simply crossed over. A little s-curve going on there. If you can show me another option that's legitimate, then I'd be happy to see it, but that's the only one I've got. All right, let's look at that last region to the right of our last um, vertical asymptote there. Are we coming from the top down, or are we coming from the bottom up? And here's another one. We had to get through that point there at 2, 0, so we had to be coming from the top down. And 
another reason was we weren't we couldn't have crossed had we come from the bottom up we couldn't have crossed the horizontal asymptote there were no horizontal asymptote crossings there and as you exit the page you got to be hugging the horizontal asymptote there you go and as i said many times if you can show me another option that fits this data i'd love to see it let's move on all right f of x equal to x minus one over x cubed minus four x ooh x cubed on the bottom x on top i think i got the horizontal asymptote figured out well, horizontal asymptote is y equals 0 because x cubed is a lot bigger than x. And look, I crossed out E. We are not going to ask that question. E gets answered in C, x-intercepts, because that because the x-axis now is our horizontal asymptote. So we will not ask that question. We only ask E when the horizontal asymptote is not 0. So I factor the denominator. I pull an x out, and then I make, oh, x squared minus 4. That's x minus 2, x plus 2. Look, we have three vertical asymptotes, 0, 2, and negative 2. So it looks like the y-axis is now an asymptote, which means you can't cross it. Uh, there's only one x-intercept. If you let x be 1, the numerator turns into 0, and that means we will cross the x-axis at 1, 0. Again, x-intercept, numerator 0. What value of x makes the numerator 0? Y-intercept? None. The y-axis happens to be a vertical asymptote, and the vertical asymptotes are sacred, so we will not cross the y-axis. As we get closer to the y-axis, we're either going to be going up to infinity or down to a negative infinity. Well, let's sketch her out. What do we got here? Oh, we've got, I, I had to dot in the x-axis, which is kind of hard to see. I had to dot in the y-axis, which is kind of hard to see, and I also dotted in x equals negative 2 and x equals 2. We have one x-intercept at 1, 0, and that's it. We have no y-intercept. We don't cross the, oh, we do cross the horizontal asymptote there. There's not a lot going on here. So now let's look at region 1. Am I above going up or below going down? And I have no idea. Look at the middle, the second region between negative 2 and 0. Are we above or below? I don't know. Look at region 3. That's between 0 and 2. Again, it's, a, it's probably an S-curve. But is it coming from the top down, or is it coming from the bottom up? I don't know. And look at the last region, to the right of uh, x equal 2. Are we above going down, or are we below going up? Again, I don't know. So we're going to set up a sign chart, and we're going to, it's, it's, it's quick, it's easy, we can do this. So let's look at the first region. I pick any number left of negative 2, so I pick negative 5, and I've got, and let's look at the factored form there all the way to the right. 1, 2, 3, we have four terms, x minus 1, x, x minus 2, and x plus 2. If I put negative 5 in, I get negative, 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 four negatives. That's positive. So all the points left of negative 2 are going to be positive. And you can plug other points in if you want to, but one point does it for us. So we're above heading up. So I pick negative 1 for that second region, and I plug that in, and I end up with negative, 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 positive. Three negatives, one positive, that's negative. So it's some sort of parabolic thing in there. I'm not really sure what the turning point is. We'd have to use calculus to figure that out, and I don't want to. Just do anything you want in there. Uh, you could plug negative 1 in and get the actual value if you want to, but I'm not going to do that. This next region is kind of a neat, I don't know if it's neat, but no, we got a point. And it's an S-curve, but is it heading down or is it heading up? Well, I assumed it was an S-curve. However, it, it could have been parabolic. You know, it could have ricocheted back up when it hit that point on the X-axis. The, the point is, we have to put in a half, and we have to put in three halves. Because I want to figure out, is, is it above the X-axis or below the X-axis on, on either side of that point? So we put a half in, and we get two negatives and a positive which is positive. We put three halves in, and we get two positives, I'm sorry, three positives and a negative, which is negative. And again, I just put it up there in the, the function. And so that's the only thing we could do. Between 0 and 1, it's above, and between 1 and 2, it's below. So it's a little S-curve going there. Had it been above on both sides, it would have ricocheted up. It would have been parabolic looking, opening up. Had it been negative on both sides, it just would have been parabolic going down. It did turn out to be that way. And pick a point to the right of 2 and plug it in. I picked 5. Positive, 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 positive. It had to be positive. So it had to be coming from the top down. Again, sign charts are great things. You can plug values in if you want to. You can do anything you want. But it has to make sense when you're done. We graphed it. Well, that wraps up Lesson 35. Uh, get to work on the homework.